My name is Danny Barnes, and what we're going to learn today is we're going to learn how to get a sound out of a five-string banjo. So um, this video is just for just super beginning, super beginners, and just wouldn't even really know which end of the banjo to hold or anything. It's just super uh, basic, el essential, elemental information here. So um, we're going to just go over a few of the mechanics of the banjo and kind of what makes it work. And if you get your hands on one, kind of some stuff you might want to know about it to kind of keep it going where you can get a sound out of it so you're not like fighting the banjo to get a tone. But um, the thing about a banjo is this, this head is movable and uh, that's kind of one thing that kind of differentiates it from other instruments is these brackets, these bolts around here kind of move the head up and down. So if you find a banjo or you buy one or somebody's got one they can loan you, you may want to kind of look at the top because roughly speaking, you sort of want this area here to be kind of flat. When a banjo sits around for a long time, this head will get loose and the, the bridge will kind of sink in and it'll deaden the tone and also lay the strings down on the fingerboard where it won't, you can't play it. And uh, so that's one thing to kind of look for. You kind of want to get, the, get this, you know, this head kind of should be sort of flat there. Another thing about it is you don't want the action to be too awful high. By action, I mean how far the string is off the fingerboard. Uh, if, if, the, if the banjo's not adjusted very well, sometimes the strings can be really hard to push down and that can be kind of discouraging uh, because it's hard to play with the left hand and also it'll pull the banjo out of tune because the strings are very far off of axis. So like a kind of a rough gauge, if you can measure from the top of the 12th fret wire to the bottom of say the fourth string, it'd be about an eighth of an inch or something like that is a pretty good, pretty good uh, action for it. Um, Another thing you can do just to check the relief in the neck, the bow of the neck, because as these things sit around with the tension on the neck, eventually the neck will start giving and they'll pull. And that makes the action really high and makes them hard to play as well. Mostly banjos will have what's called a truss rod, uh, which is in the, it's, a, it's a bar that's in the neck that counteracts the string pressure. And just so you can check sort of if it's adjusted, if you hold, say, the third string down at the first fret and the last fret, it makes a straight edge. And you can see how far that string rides off the neck there, off the fingerboard. It should be just about a business card width or you should just get a little bit of a gap there. There needs to be a little tiny bit of relief in the neck or the, or the string, it'll rattle. And if it, but if it's too far, if, the, if it's bowed out where it's a big dish, then the strings will be all out of tune. It won't play and tune up the neck and, and, it, and it'll be difficult to play. Also, if, the, if this string just lays flat across there and you don't get like a, like I, th I think it's about like a business card width and about the middle of the banjo is a pretty good relief for it. Um, if, you know, it, it's pretty hard to find someone that knows how to work on a banjo, typically in a guitar store or something like that. They'll know guitars really well, but they won't know that much about a banjo. So a lot of this stuff is available. There's a website called banjohangout.com and there's a ton of information and, uh, and there's a magazine called Banjo Newsletter that has a lot of banjo setup information in it. Uh, the point I'm making is you kind of got to get a banjo that's sort of in the ballpark adjustment wise because otherwise you're, you're fighting the banjo and it won't sound right or it'll be hard to play. And sometimes it can be discouraging where it's actually the equipment and not the operator. But uh, anyway, so um, if you, and, and so you kind of get it set up where, you know, if it's kind of set up, you, you may have to take it to someone to get it done. Or hopefully you can, if you purchase one or borrow one, it's kind of reasonably in the ballpark where you can get a sound out of it, you know. But those are some things to look for. And you can even play that for your a handy friend or for a, a repairman. Just kind of give them an idea of what you're looking for on it. One other adjustment about the banjo, the bridge is free floating. It, you, you can easily scoot this bridge around this little wooden piece that holds the strings up. You can scoot it around really easy. And a lot of times that adjustment will get out. And a good place to sort of look for it is if you measured, say, from the, the front of the nut here, this little plastic piece, to the middle of the fret wire, then this, that distance should be the same, roughly speaking, as from the fret to the bridge. Uh, in other words, this distance from the bridge to the nut should be bisected by the 12th fret. Because this bridge, can you can scoot it all over the place here, and sometimes you'll see them in the store on a rack, and this bridge may be all over the place, and it, what it does, it puts the banjo out of tune when you go to fret it. You can tune it with the tuner where it's in tune open, but when you try to play a chord, it'll note sharp or flat, depending on where that is. So what I do is I figure out where it is, and I put me a little pencil mark on there, so I always know where to put it, you know. But if I change string gauges or if I alter the tension on the head, then I've got to remeasure that. But anyway, so that's the idea. The first step is getting one, and the second step is kind of get where it's sort of like relatively set up, you know, where you can sort of work with it, you know. So um, 
Um, so the thing about the banjo, as far as holding the banjo is concerned, is the, the banjo, the neck is very thin. So it's very easy to pull the banjo and to push the tuning um, when, you, when you pull the neck. So what I try to do is I try to get sort of a neck neutral position on the banjo when I hold it. So I'm at about a 45 degree angle. But when I go to play the banjo, you want to make sure that you're not pushing or pulling the neck with the left hand because it's real easy to do. The neck is, is a lot smaller than, say, a guitar neck or a bass neck where they're pretty stable. A banjo, even a very expensive banjo, when you, I don't know if you can hear that or not, but it pulls the pitch up and down. So like when I'm fretting the banjo and playing the banjo, I sort of want to make sure I'm not horsing on the neck like that because it'll pull it out of tune. Um, as far as how the banjo's tuned, um, easy thing is strings. Uh, it, it's easy to figure out the string numbers because it's a five string banjo and it's got this weird little short string and that's five. So we're counting five on the top. So it's five, four, three, two, and one is the way the strings are numbered. The little short string is fifth string. I, I keep that straight because you don't see a, a string in the middle of a neck on a common instrument, so you remember that's the fifth string. So it's five, four, three, two, and one going towards the floor there. So the, the, the string that's closest to the floor is the first string. First, second, third, fourth, and fifth string. Um, so the way they're tuned, strings four, three, and two are just like four, three, and two on a guitar. So if you have like a, you can buy guitar tuners really inexpensively for way under $20 and tune those three strings. Uh, the way the fifth string is tuned, it's a G, which is uh, if you held the guitar at the first string at the third fret, that would give you that G. It's an octave above this G. Uh, the fourth string is tuned just like the fourth string of a guitar. That's a D. The third string is tuned just like the third string of a guitar, which is also a G. The second string is a B, just like the second string on a guitar. And the first string is D which is like the second string of a guitar held down at the third fret. It's a D, two frets lower than the standard E on a guitar. So the strings again are G, D, G, B, and D. It makes a G triad. So you got some notes that are replicated. You have two Gs, you got two Ds, and a B. So what you get is, you get a G chord by just strumming the banjo. So you're already halfway home there. <laughs> so that makes a chord for you already. So you can chord the banjo with just one finger by going, Across like that, that makes, that makes a chord in every fret. So again, when you go to fret the banjo or note the banjo with the left hand, you want to make sure you're not tugging on it because it's real easy to pull it out of tune that way. The other thing about it is if you squeeze too hard, that'll pull it out of tune also. The strings on a banjo are sort of light, lighter gauge than a guitar, and if you, if you squeeze really hard when you go to fret a string, that'll pull it out of tune also. So I try to use just enough pressure to hold the string down. but. Uh, not enough to say pull it out of tune. It's real easy to sort of distort things and, and it's, it's very easy to kind of push the banjo around with the left hand. So I try to use a really light touch with the left hand. Um, what I do, uh, a, a kind of a good little rule of thumb is if you line up all your fingers on the fourth string at a different fret, that kind of gives you an idea of what the left hand should look like. In order to do that, the thumb has to be in the back of the banjo like that. And I got it straight and the knuckle's not bent. And then I line up each finger on a fret. That's just a good little way of checking uh, to see if I can, if I'm holding the banjo right. Now these knuckles are parallel to the strings here. Uh, I got space between all my fingers, and I'm using the very tips of my fingers down here on the left hand. So this is kind of a really good way of holding the banjo. I'm not tugging it. Matter of fact, I'm, when I go to, I'm sort of squeezing it between my fingers like that. But what, what I want to make sure I'm not doing is I'm not pushing the banjo neck up or down, or pulling it, or tugging it because I'll pull it out of tune. So I, I, I keep it. Keep it this is nice and light and I'm not uh, tugging on the banjo and I know it right behind the fret wire each time I put it down. But this is a good way of just kind of checking. There again, my thumb's in the back of the banjo, straight down. This knuckle's not bent. I don't have my thumb high like that. I got it down. You know, you don't hold it like a golf club, like you're gripping it. You hold it down like that so you don't move the neck. So anyway, that's a really good little way of checking to make sure you're holding the banjo right.